they can go forward for the Lord. Um, I'm in churches all over the nation. Then there's young people that are that love the Word of God, that want to live for the Word of God, that are marrying other Christians, that are having children instead of three dogs. They have children. Nothing wrong with dogs, but you know, it's, we're to replenish the earth. And you can't do that with dogs. So every every generation is different, but it's the same same God, same Lord, same Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit can uh, preserve and protect and encourage and cause. Um, I remember, I have three daughters. I remember when my daughters, they were, I got saved, they were five, 10, and 15. And uh, they were already talking about, the 15 year old was already talking about her wedding day, how, you know, they were planning a wedding day and all that. And of course, Bonnie was uh, uh, encouraging the conversation. They were already talking about how they were going to come down the aisle of the church in a white dress. Because they deserved the white dress. They would have never committed the marriage act before they were married. They were all planning that, you know. Well, praise the Lord. All my daughters married preachers. And they, they've been good girls. They love God. And, uh, you know, that, that was their goal. And God allowed them to accomplish those goals. He's the same God. He is the same God. But here's what I want to talk to you about. It's my goal in 2024 to know the Lord Jesus Christ better than I knew him last year. I like to know him better. Now, along the way, there's going to be some adjustments. Uh, I need to continue to measure up to the to the light, to the well, let's see if it says something. I know it does. Um, let's look at uh, I'll go next verse. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God had distributed to us. You see, each one of us is given light. We don't pick it up the same way. We get it differently. We're, uh, we're different individuals. Yes, we're fearfully and wonderfully made, um, but we get light. We get information. You know, you hear the sermons, you read the Bibles, and, and, and you get an idea and it's from the Lord, and I want you to go up the ladder and do something a little better and more for the Lord. Well, that's light. So, the only spiritual competition you have is to measure up to the light that's already been given to you. And uh, you, you don't try and be like brother so-and-so. Nothing wrong with an example, but he doesn't have your talents, he doesn't have your intelligence, he's not you. We're all fearfully and wonderfully made. So, with the power of the Holy Ghost, you can live up to the light, and that's what I want to do in my life, is I want to go forward, live up to the light that's been given to me. I don't want to try and measure up to somebody else. I, I, I don't want to live up to their expectations. I want to live up to what the Lord wants me to do. And that's my challenge for you in Sunday school is you don't have to try and be somebody else. Just be you and live up to the light. Uh, that, you know, spiritual competition is uh, it's not good. It's uh, I know the Apostle Paul didn't like it, and I know God doesn't like it. And, it, and it, it, what it does is it uh, it takes somebody, and let's say there's uh, somebody up here that plays guitar, okay? And this guy plays the guitar, and he sings. Well, I can't play the guitar, so I must not be a spiritualist, Chuck. You know, well, that's a lie. You know, Chuck might be a heathen, I don't know. You know, I'm, you don't know if I'm saved. You don't know that. There's no way to tell if I'm saved. There's no way at all to tell that. And don't run over to the Gospels and say, well, we'll know them by their fruits. 
That's talking about false teachers. And, and that's the Gospels written to the Jews. I mean, anyway, I, I'm just saying, <laughs> spiritual competition is a, is a bad thing. And I, I'm not going to try and be your cheerleader this hour. I'm not trying to be a motivational speaker. I'm not trying to entertain you. I'm just trying to tell you something that the Lord has shown me. And there are, you know, not everyone in this building this morning needs to repent. Uh, some of you are already living up to what life God's given you. But there will be some here that used to. You used to, but you no longer measure up. And then there's some that never did measure up. And then there's some that are measuring up, growing in grace, day by day. Um, you know, the goal of a Christian is not to compare yourself amongst yourself in our lives. Um, my three daughters are all beautiful vocalists, and so is their husbands, every one of them. If you had them up here singing, you'd say, wow. They, I've got CDs uh, that I sometimes bring in off of set. They're just amazing. They all have voice lessons. They're all tremendous. Uh, they play the ones with flutists, the pianists. I mean, they, they're talented people. They sung their way through college. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but a Christian's goal ought to just be able to measure up to the light that's God given you. There are people who have been saved 10 years and they have 10 years worth of experience but they only have one year's worth of gross, growth and they've stayed 10 times they've had the same level. They've never grown any further. I'll give you an example. And if I'm picking on you, so what? Uh, there are 66 books in the Bible. Can you name the 13 books that were written by the Apostle Paul? Do you, do you know in what order the Old Testament is? Well, you've been saying it for a lot of years, but you can learn it. It's just, you know, I mean, you've got the cheaters on your little Bible there, and I understand how they work. But, you know, memorizing the books and the order of the books is. My children were forced to do that, uh, all of them, before they were 10 years old. And uh, they never heard of them. And you know, that's, that's just part of, if the Lord wants you to do that, then you'll feel that, you'll sense that. Uh, there are people who can memorize scripture by the book. Um, I'm talking about my kids this morning, but that's all right, I missed them. My oldest daughter, Kristen, she, she was going to a Christian school in Midland, and uh, she was doing a, when they wanted to do a, in Bible class, they wanted to do a term paper on something in her, uh, in her 11th grade, and uh, she was going to use it out of the book of James, and she was having a hard time deciding what she wanted to do, and the, the Bible teacher said to her, well, if you're struggling, then why don't you just memorize the book of James? And she said, I can do that. So she stood up, I went, <laughs> and she recited the book of James. The next year she did the book of Philippians. Word for her. You know, has she ever forgotten that? Oh, I'm sure she's lost some of it. But she's 53 years old. She graduated salutatorian at Christian school, and then she went on down to Bible College. She graduated from the Tory down there. And she met a man who loved God, six foot six, beautiful fellow. And they, their, their memorizing scripture has been what they've done. Now, you don't have to compare yourself to my daughter or my son in law. You don't compare yourself amongst yourself. But if the Lord ever wants you to memorize scripture, here's a good way to do it. You can use your phone, okay? Or you can use three by five cards. Let's just say you want to measure uh, 
or memorize Psalm 1. Great place to start. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the tent. The, the verse, you, you say six words out loud, and then you add three. And then you say the six words plus the three three times. And then you add three more. And you say that three times. And then you add three words. And I used to write them down on a three by five card. Now you got your phone if you want to check. But, uh, and if you don't have your Bible on your phone, you're, you're missing something that's a tool. So, so maybe, maybe the Lord, the light that you're getting is, I'd like to memorize a little more scripture. Well, why do you want to memorize scripture? Well, I'll tell you why. Yeah, I'm a preacher, but I want to use it. I got a brother that's unsaved. His name is Joe. And uh, when we have conversation, I like to say, well, you know, the Bible says this. Just normal, and he, he has been, I would say, 40 years, a couple of months from now, and he's not saved yet. My oldest sister's been saved. My older brother's been saved. But this one hasn't. My mother's been saved. My dad's been saved. I was the first one in the group. So maybe the Lord's wanting you to memorize scripture. Here's another benefit of having you memorize scripture. Um, you're sleeping there pretty solid. And in your mind, you're having a dream. And all of a sudden, the dream turns to nasty, impure thoughts. Well, you don't really want that, but it's in your mind. Well, I can guarantee you that if while you're sleeping and dreaming, you say, Jesus wept. Smallest verse in the Bible. If you, if you run some scripture through your mind, you cannot dream a filthy dream. I'm just telling you, if you don't want that in your brain, uh, how do you know? How do you think I know? You know, I'm just putting my pants on just like you do. But the fact is, you don't want to compare yourself amongst yourself, but you want to grow. You want to grow in Christianity. You know, the goal is to grow. Having one year experience after you've been saved 20 years, you're, you're immature. You know, you, uh, you're only young once, but you can be immature forever. You know, you met those folks. Some people make no progress. Like sitting in a rocking chair, you know. You can have a lot of motion, but no movement. <laughs> What's that old animal, gerbil? I mean, you picture that? I mean, that guy is, he's on a treadmill, he's got a lot of activity, but he ain't going anywhere. Many Christians are that way. They're losing. And what, what happens, I, I, I believe, is you get bored along the way. Just bored along the way. Um, several, several, several months ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I was reading the Bible daily as per usual, but I was dull, tired of it. Yeah, I was tired of it. It just didn't have zip for me, you know. I'm trying to do sermons and up here preaching all the time. And here I am, two-faced, you know. Supposed to love the book and love the Lord. And I didn't care if I looked at that. I'd rather look at Facebook. Seemed more entertaining, you know. And uh, I didn't ask him to. But the Lord re-encouraged, re-energized me. Me and the world. I mean, I I, uh, I got a few things and I went, oh, that's that's really good. Thank you, Lord. And uh, I'll tell you one thing. If you remember when Jacob, it says in scriptures that Jacob used a stone for his coat. So it said. Now, what are you picturing when it says Jacob used a stone for his pillow? Well, you're an American. You're a Westerner. You're an Englishman. So you're thinking this guy's got a, a little rock behind his head. Well, 
I took my phone, and the devil didn't tell me to do this. It was the Lord. And I, and I said, what was a pillow 2,000 years ago? And here's the answer I got. It was a five foot in diameter, five inch stick, covered with goat hair, mattress that was used to ride camels and birds, uh, beasts of earth, birds, donkeys, things like that. So now you got this five foot circle that thick. And it said, Jacob used a stone for his pillow. Well, I've been on the desert, and when you put your hand in the desert in the day, the sand's hot. But it's very porous. So as soon as the sun goes down, it gets cold. And it's a bone. You've been on the desert. You, 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 you get cold. But a stone has had the sun on it all day long. A stone takes the heat in. And the stone's going to be warm all night. So when he said he used the stone for his pillow, he used the stone for his mattress. He was warm on a rock. But that, and you know, I, I read that and I seen that and the Lord led me through that and I got excited about the scriptures. That, that's how it happened. And then in Mark 4, Mark 4 is where he's doing that uh, miracle. You know, it says he's asleep in the stern of the ship. That's the back of the ship. It says he's asleep on his pillow, the Lord. He's laying on a memory foam, man. He's, he's stretched out, you know. He's on a big, goat-covered, soft, relaxing. And of course, he comes to the, I picture him coming to the bow, and peace be still, and the, the water stops, and you know, what matter of man is this? You know the story. But, uh, so that's, that's what happened to me. And from, <coughs> I think it's been about a year and a half, from then on, when I read the scriptures, I'm kind of really looking for the next nugget. And uh, yes, I've got more sense. But uh, and you'll hear some of that this morning. I got a couple of dandies uh, this morning, and I got another one for tonight that, uh, that should help you along the way. But you know, you don't want to be a gerbil, you don't want to be uh, somebody in a rocking chair, not, not going forward. You know, and it says, the Apostle Paul says you, you ought to be apt to teach. Oh, I could never teach. Well, why not? You know, I'm not saying that everybody has to be compare yourself. Not you all don't got to be a guitar. But you know, we we absorb the preaching, we absorb Scripture, and what are you doing with it? You know, this is a no, not a new thing. I mean, back in Numbers 13 and 14, when Moses was trying to get his folks, you know, through the Red Sea, they go through the Red Sea. Big miracle, right? And everybody sees it. A million and a half people go across. And they get to K, K Bar, what is it? K Bar Dish, I'm saying that wrong. K Dish Barnea. That's it. And, and when they get there, and they stop. They don't want to go anywhere. They plateau. Well, that's what happens in our Christian life is we plateau. Maybe we listen to the wrong people. Back in Numbers, you know, they sent the spies out, 12 spies, 10 were bad, 2 were good, and the other was solid. And here, here Caleb and his buddy, they were trying to encourage him to go in, and they wouldn't go in. All these people wouldn't go in. So what happens with them? Forty years they wandered in the desert. Forty years, you know. So they're not they're not going forward, and there were consequences for that. They weren't being used of God. Forty years of waste. Just you know, they plateaued, same place, doing nothing, and boom. And, and I'm not saying it's got to be a big thing, but you have to. You should. Uh, do more than take up 18 inches of padded field. You, know, you should, you should want to go forward for the Lord. 
Well, someday I'm going to learn how to pray. Well, when's that? You know, I mean, when, when's that going to happen? You know, you're you're breathing God's air. He saved your soul, giving you a book, and and you ought to be. Look what it says in verse 14. Verse 14 says, "For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you, but we are come as far as you, also preaching the gospel." You, we're we to be reaching forward, stretching to the next level, whatever that is, whatever the light. You know, don't compare yourself amongst yourself. But if you've got some light in some area, then go forward. Go forward. Um, you know, don't be that verbal that just plateaus. You have, you have potential. Uh, I heard a man say this one time. Everybody's born with potential. But you die, you leave a legacy. So, when you get around to dying, what's going to be your legacy? You know, uh, have you done something for the Lord? Are you known as a Christian? I mean, if they were having a, a, a trial to prove that you were a Christian by your life, would there even be enough evidence to cause you to be guilty of being a Christian? Or does anybody know that? You know? So I'm just saying that we ought, to, we ought to stretch. We ought to go forward. We ought to want to measure up. What happens, I see, is when you compare yourself amongst yourself, you don't have the person's talents you're trying to compare yourself. Or maybe, maybe they're not very talented. And you're not even living up to the potential that you have. Maybe you could be a better teacher than them, a better prayer warrior, a better, a better something. I don't know. Something, you could be kinder. Um, you, you could be quit being so short-tempered. People that fly off the handle rarely have a good landing, you know. You can blow your strike and just add the pollution. I mean, that's the way it is. So, you know, you, it ought to be your devotion that look, look for what the Lord has given you and what you should do differently uh, every day to try and measure up to the light that's been, been given to you. Um, there's, the Bible teaches some things about that. If you think about Enoch. Enoch, you know, he disappeared, right? Uh, Enoch was not an astronaut. He, he was a was not. No longer, he just was not. And uh, Enoch disappeared. When he walked with God, he disappeared. Well, those guys in that day, they didn't say, well, I'm not spiritual because I can't disappear. You know, they're comparing yourself amongst themselves. So, who's another guy? Elijah. You know, Elijah was a good guy, man. He could bring fire up to hell. And if you were a preacher in those days, and you could bring fire from heaven. You must not be spiritual. You know, then you got uh, uh, Tom, Thomas and Philip. You know, they see Peter walking on the water. Oh, you must not be spiritual because you're just walking on the water. I can't do that. Compare yourself amongst yourself. You know, and, and it's discouraging because you can't keep up with the, the neighbor there, you know. Uh, you say, I'm, I'm trying to get you out of an assignment. No, no, I, I think I'm trying to keep some sanity during the assignment. You know, you're, you're different than me, I'm different than you. Um, but all we're supposed to be doing is measuring up to the light that God's been given to us, and that's what we're going to be doing, is measuring up. And uh, grow, growing stronger. Look at verse uh, oh, 15. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that you shall be enlarged to, according to the rule and abundantly, to preach the gospel in the region beyond. And not to 
boast in another man's line of things being ready in our hand. Um, each one of us can cause good things to happen here in the church. What, what are you causing? Are, are you causing good things or are you living off other men's labors? You know, I'm just trying to encourage you that if the Lord has given you some light in what to do, then just do it. Just go forward. Stretch towards it. Go in that direction. Don't compare yourself amongst yourself. Just, uh, just go forward with what light God's given you. That's the potential you have will give you a legacy. And that's, that's, I want you to consider that we need to go forward. Continue. It doesn't matter how fast. Just go forward. So each year you can see that you're growing in the Lord. And uh, that was my lesson. So we're going to stop right now. Let's make a prayer. Father, I thank you for what I've got to give. I pray somebody would get some resolve from this and make a decision to go forward. Do what's needed in their life. Let them get that potential build a legacy. In Christ's name.